What is going on, everybody, and welcome to another technical analysis where I like to dive into the charts going over the next week's uh, potential events to kind of see where our entries and exits are in particular stocks that we are watching for the week. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do also provide a weekly analysis where I kind of go over uh, current events and essentially scheduled events, earnings uh, to get you prepared for the week ahead. So if that sounds like something you're interested in. Consider subscribing and go ahead and drop a like before we get started. So as you can see, uh, over the past, essentially since, what has it been? I think since November, uh, we've been, or since April, uh, I, actually I take that back, it's since October of, uh, what has it been since 23? Uh, we've essentially been up ever since. Now we have had a little bit of a pullback, ultimately uh, building off the 50 weekly here that you can see that we bounced and kind of continued going up. Uh, as far as technical analysis is concerned for this particular week, we have to understand that there's a lot of events. We just got out of another non-farm in which we are seeing rapid declines in employment and, and rapid unemployment and not as many new jobs being created. Again, ultimately understanding that the government is uh, producing a lot of those jobs. And so uh, with that being said, it's adding to the debt ceiling that we have essentially don't have any cap on right now uh, because we are trying to push this thing over until next year after the election. Once the election occurs, Whoever is president at that point is essentially going to get offloaded with a, a massive, horrible uh, economic situation at that point. A lot of people are trying to de-dollarize because of how we weaponized it and then ultimately understand that, um, again, at that point, whoever uh, is president is going to essentially be burdened uh, with, with that current situation. So. So as you can see, uh, the market is going to continue, like I've always stated, is going to continue to keep pushing up. Uh, that's by design until we actually get some fear. And this is why there's also a narrative, um, a positive narrative that's utopic, that's always being pushed out there to control the masses. And then your uh, the realistic view of what's actually going on. So as of right now, uh, what we're seeing is uh, we have break uh, broken out of this technical level here, this uh, 5,500 mark. Uh, and we are essentially skyrocketing. Now, volume's been really low. and We've had a very slow week because it was 4th of July last week. So you do have to keep that in mind. I wouldn't be surprised if we start pulling back because we are getting ready for earnings mode. Uh, market will typically push up during that. Uh, it does sell off a little bit going into it. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start trying to pull back and retest this level. Uh, again, the 5,500 mark uh, we're in essentially... Um, Price discovery at this point. So since we are at a new all-time high, uh, again, uh, the market can continue to rip, especially if uh, it's going to be fueled by bond buying from essentially the treasury. You have to also understand that Berkshire Hathaway is uh, holds a mass majority of those bonds as well. I think they hold like 3% of all the bonds. Uh, and they have tons of money on the sideline if they need to buy more bonds. These are things you have to keep in mind. This is also why I do analysis on other different things. So you can kind of know what the narrative is. And then these give you your price, target entries, and exits. So again, we consolidated for quite a while uh, for what is almost a month here. So with that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if we attempt to try to um, – we need to break the 5,600. But I wouldn't be surprised if we hit the 5,700. If if things can be sustainable and we don't break, we have to understand that our engine is running with this, with no oil at this point, and it's continuing to do so before something breaks. Now, considering that there is no debt ceiling, uh, you'll continue to see massive spending until essentially the new president comes in and has to put a stop to it because the Fed have already said that this isn't sustainable. Uh, but again, that's not stopping the government for spending to get this pushed over and cast the blame on to whoever the new president is. Uh, so these are things you have to keep in mind. It doesn't matter who is being elected. It is all essentially based on uh, the fact that you're on a debt-based system. There is no debt ceiling. They're going to continue to spend and keep this thing propped up. And when they do that, this will continue to push the market up until something breaks. And we've seen a lot of things break. They've been bailing out even the smaller banks. Uh, so they're doing everything in their power to keep this thing up. And you can't bet against BlackRock. You can't bet against the Fed uh, because they will continue to push us up. By design, this thing will continue to go up until it has to correct next year. 
that is uh, where I'm looking at at this point. It should have corrected a long time ago. This is why a lot of institutions were sitting out and now they look bad because the market's been going up because of the fact that the debt ceiling got removed. And so now we can just free spend until the new president comes in or whoever the president is next year. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. So this market will, if nothing breaks, it's not saying things can't break, they can break. And that's how the Fed will have to react and start cutting rates when things get too bad, as we're seeing with unemployment is starting to skyrocket and the revisions that they're making are making it look much worse and then understand they're going to have to come back and revise everything uh, even more so. So so technical wise, again, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we come back down to this level as of right now. Uh, the volume, the thing is, is the volume has been really low. Uh, so with the volume being low over the past week, we've gotten another additional push up here. So I think um, when the value, normal volume comes back, this could start correcting back down. And then we could start seeing another uh, massive run up again, looking for uh, the 5,600. Again, psychological numbers uh, hit that and then potentially uh, 57 by end of year, maybe even 58 by end of year. Again, if nothing breaks until then. So don't just assume it's going to go one way. Yes, thing, the underlying current is really bad. But again, you have to understand they will continue to try to push this thing as far as they can. And if they are uh, if they can do that, then we could potentially see 5,800 before that actually starts correcting, if not more, uh, by March. So this is why you got to kind of understand what the current events are and stuff going on and what could potentially be playing out. And you can tie that, correlate that into the charts. So, so that's what it's currently like looking out for SPX. Uh, Bitcoin is seeing uh, some sell-off. Uh, there is a bit of a pocket here on Bitcoin. Uh, it's kind of more of a speed bump here, here, roughly around the 52 mark, 52K mark. And uh, we did see a quick wick out of here when it hit that. Again, ultimately, our major support is down here at the 46K mark. Uh, I've talked about this before. We've had lots of consolidation. Now we're starting to sell off a speed bump. I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see more selling down to the 46 and then potentially skyrocketing and going back to all time high. Uh, again, hoping that that should fall in line with the way the market is in, in general, as far as uh, the fear and the panic of a recession. If you don't know, think we're in a recession, we very much are in a recession. It's reflected on earnings. You continue to watch that over all these other earnings. If they are not AI or AI infrastructure, they are hurting extremely bad right now uh, because of the overhead. If you have any massive amount of overhead, you are you are essentially being hit by inflation, which quote unquote doesn't exist anymore. But and so this has been a hedge against inflation. So the market's just adjusting. But I, again, I think uh, this 40K, uh, this 46K mark is, is a strong support. Uh, and again, I won't be surprised if it visits, visits here. And I won't be surprised if you have the same move or it wicks very quickly out of here before it starts reclaiming back to all time highs. Uh, so this is something you have to keep in mind uh, moving forward. Again, I do believe there'll be a strong bull run after a recession is priced in. But you have to, again, understand that may take a little bit of time because of the fact that you have to get consumer confidence back. So even if they start pumping uh, quantitative easing back into the market, uh, that is not going to solely just bring the market right back out of uh, a zombie state. You have to understand that uh, the consumer has to build confidence and start going out and purchasing. And it can't just be the government that is currently sustaining the, the market right now and making things look utopic right now. And now, if you look at the... Take a look at the bond market here. Uh, the bond market is breaking out. It looks like it's retested. It is hard to get momentum, and this thing won't gain momentum unless the Fed start rapidly cutting rates. You may continue to watch this uh, chop. Uh, it did look like it broke this downward uh, trend, uh, but it has a smaller uh, channel that we are currently playing with the bonds uh, right here. So we're kind of looking to play this. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to play this until we get it cut. Again, I think bonds are just a hot mess because of the massive amount of manipul manipulation that's going on with the Fed. The Treasury office, they're buying $2 billion worth of bonds every month. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind, and that's going to last until the end of July. So yeah, you do really have to keep that in mind. Uh, September, they're talking about a cut since September starting to happen uh, again. October is typically a month where you sell off pretty heavy. That's just on average. You have to look at your normal cycle. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, when, but again, what we're ultimately looking for is a quick cuts by the Fed because something uh, bad is happening. And then in correlation with that, the next step you would be looking for if they're rapidly cutting rates is to look and see where inflation, what the inflation reports look like after that. You have to, again, understand that there is a very delayed reaction once the cuts start happening. 
Uh, so once if there are rapid rate cuts, you're going to see this thing explode. And I think I do believe uh, that bonds can make a massive play up. And I do believe uh, we can at least look at potentially a 155 move. Um, again, I don't think we're going to go back to these historical levels, not the one minute mark, but uh, uh, these historical levels that we saw back during the pandemic. Uh, these, I don't think you're going to see these 179, although uh, with a massive amount of uh, money being pumped in and everything that's currently going on, we may see more historical uh, numbers because of the way uh, the dollar and the bonds are repositioning and it's putting a lot of stress on this debt-based system and no debt-based system has worked in history. So uh, again, we'll continue to watch and see how this plays out. But uh, again, very historical levels right now. But I do believe uh, at some point we can recover at least to the 120, potentially even the 150. Uh, but when you start looking at the 180s, I think that's, that's kind of really out of grasp. I do even believe the 150 may be out of grasp. Uh, but I do believe we can still at least reach that 130 mark is a strong possibility, uh, but it's really hard to say. And again, that's not going to happen until the Fed starts cutting rapidly. Uh, again, bonds don't move unless there's rapid movement on rates, right? And then until that happens, you're not going to see the bonds make a big move, but they do occur. And they give you, uh, essentially, the Fed will announce it days before they start doing it. So Again, if it's a bigger cut than a 25-point basis move, you're looking 50, 75 points. This thing will really start rocketing on those kind of uh, cuts. That's what you're really kind of looking for there. Let's take a quick look at gold here. Uh, as the gold is continuing to skyrocket, it hasn't even, um, ever since it finally broke this, that uh, roughly that 200 level, it hasn't even uh, tried to um, retest what was old resistance is now support, uh, but it is wicking. So it looks like we could be topping out here roughly at the 222, expecting this to try to make some sort of um, retracement back to the 200 uh, before we start making all time highs. And yes, I do believe you start getting recessionary fears. You're going to see uh, crypto and gold. Uh, gold and silver have been making quite a run lately. So I do believe you could see uh, or to retest in another new all time high. In gold and silver with uh, the concerns about the future and the dollar moving forward and then we'll take a look at our old tesla tesla has been uh, over the past month has really uh, been a beast again they're starting to steer the narrative about uh, fsd uh, which a new update just got rolled out over the past week uh, it's, so it's gaining momentum off that and we're starting to see institutions talk about humanoids again i think this will be way bigger move in tesla than we're seeing that we have seen in nvidia again none of this financial advice and, and take it at your own risk but you have to understand now that we got this massive breakout we've been consolidating this uh, this massive wedge for so long um that i do believe this is going to be the breakout we will see a new all-time high on this uh, especially if we start getting momentum uh there's particular an event on august 8th if they announced the uber uh founder potentially taking over robo taxi for tesla and you also have elon uh guiding that this thing can go absolutely parabolic uh it could potentially read an all-time high just off of fsd and robo taxi and that's not even including the humanoids uh so you have to keep that in mind uh, but we are seeing a breakout here now again um end of the month we want to, we do we may see a retracement back to the two the 220 uh, so just keep that in mind. You always get a break and a retest. It needs to hold the 220. And that's not saying the monthly can't reach back down a little bit lower than that. It's at the 195, just below 200, and then wick back up and start really running. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind, especially when you're looking at higher time frames. But I really do like the momentum that Tesla has. As you can see, it's wicking. It's starting to build momentum. Uh, the fact that we didn't even retrace that this thing is on the daily is already wicking and starting to push. Our next target for Tesla is about 280. Um, and again, this thing can't continue to go parabolic uh, automatically. <laughs> it's not the way it works. Uh, so you don't want this thing to go just pure parabolic. You want this to at least retrace it. But you do have the August uh, 8th with robo taxis. And I think that if they do announce the founder, I think that's going to push this thing well over 300, potentially even more. And then again, that's not even including the humanoids. I think Tesla is going to be the next guinea pig to push this market. Uh, to new all-time highs, given that they need that sediment to keep going, especially through election. And so um, people are going to drain all their money out of Bitcoin and Apple and 
NVIDIA and, and soak it in a Tesla because that's the new narrative. Because originally you had the infrastructure, which was NVIDIA. Now that's moving into more of a software play, which is FSD and humanoids. And, and Tesla's the prime candidate. And I talk about this all the time. So um, a lot of people can't mass produce humanoids. A lot of people don't have the technology that's even close to FSD. Uh, even if, again, I talk about this comparable to Mercedes, you, know, you are always having to correct uh, what the Mercedes uh, automation does when it comes to FSD compared to what Tesla has and understand that Tesla can drive many miles uh, being corrected and it's getting in that that uh, that essentially uh, interaction ratio is dwindling and dwindling uh, down to nothing and it's getting better and better and like I said just with a recent update it's becoming more human like when it drives and doing a lot better uh, again we're only about probably a year away from this thing really exploding and then with all the communication that Tesla's have with China. And then if we can get the uh, Uber founder, Tesla's unstoppable when it comes to FSD and understand where that goes because the Uber founder already knows how to implement and change uh, how uh, tr essentially traveling has been uh, being getting completed by offering Uber, right? And understand what it takes to go to these cities and implement these things. And uh, with with robo taxis, I think they, he would be an ideal candidate. It's not saying it will happen. There's a lot of rumors flowing around about it, but it would be massive considering he got ousted essentially by Uber. What a greater, a better comeback story than taking robo taxi and, and making it surpass that of Uber. So. Again, there's a lot of narrative driven there. And again, uh, technical wise, uh, this week, if we can hold hold this level, uh, the 421, um, aiming for that 480. If we, uh, but again, given that if volume comes back in and the market just starts selling off in general, uh, look to roughly hold around that 220 mark. And then if it can, uh, that is definitely a breakout. I think we're going to continue up much higher, uh, going to challenge the new all time high for Tesla. So that's thing you'll straight go parabolic to to four or 500. Uh, but again, if he can, a lot of market sediments when it comes to new tech and innovative things, it starts building momentum and then understand that if it continues to build off the FSD, if it continues to build off of humanoids, uh, this thing can go absolutely parabolic. So I just keep that in mind. Then you got pellets here. Uh, Again, doing very well. We'll see. It always wants to run up going into earnings. And then uh, it, sadly, if it doesn't make uh, if it doesn't make uh, the SPX and is not uh, essentially included in the SPX, uh, this thing will start selling off again. But you have to understand that we have been testing this trend line multiple times. We continue to build up. This thing is due for a pullback at some point. Uh, it's not saying it can't essentially go parabolic to 40 and then have a pullback like it has before. Uh, which very well could happen, but ultimately it's still holding this trend line very well. Uh, so, but right now we're holding that uh, to $27 mark. If it gets rejected here, that's definitely not a good sign. I'm expecting it to come back down to potentially the $20 mark and then go from that point. So, and then PayPal, I've been talking about PayPal a lot. I really like the consolidation here. I think uh, once the market starts uh, churning, uh, PayPal will be one of those that will make a massive run up uh, given their customer base given their CEO, given that they've uh, tried to keep everything simple and very focused now with the new CEO. I think this thing is uh, about ready to really rip and break out of the $70 mark up to uh, potentially 100, 120 at that point. It's kind of what I'm looking for there. But if we start selling off, um, again, your, your, really, your floor support here is really around the 50. If it breaks that, uh, that could be could be worried somebody have to also understand that they have tons of money set aside for buybacks so that is one positive for uh, paypal as well uh, moving forward and then um let's take a look at ba again i don't know why ba is even at these levels but like i said manipulation is a thing and it does truly happen quite a bit so uh, again still topping out at the 200 and really kind of holding that base around 172 uh, so continuing to watch and see how this does. If the for some reason the government does kind of take over BA, uh, which I'm uh, which is in my opinion going to happen either way, that could send this thing back parabolic. Then look for it to break out of this 200 if that news is announced, uh, and then looking for it to uh, to target that 220 and then maybe even higher than that, just depending on what this the news is that does come out. I'm considering there's been a lot of issues with Boeing. Again, it still holds the 150 mark, which is amazing in my in my opinion. Uh, but we'll continue to watch as it continues to consolidate. It was consolidating a lot here between the 220 and the 
uh, 200 mark, and then it finally broke down, and it's now in this, this lower um, this lower range here that is consolidating quite a bit. So, again, either way, there will be a, a bigger break either in either direction. I think it really just depends on uh, the direction the that the company will go in the upcoming earnings or whatever they are forecasting. So then we got JPM. JPM, uh, the biggest bank in the world by far, um, continuing to acquire assets that it shouldn't be acquiring. But uh, nonetheless, we'll see how they're doing. Oh, we did get some news about them uh, essentially saying that there's been so many overdraft fees and stuff going on that they, they may start charging people to hold accounts. Uh, so again, even despite the massive amount of money that they are taking in, there's still a lot of things at risk. And you know, a couple other banks came out and said Charles Schwab and uh, USAA are, are two of those big banks that may be in big trouble and understand whether where they could be going. So with that being said, um, with the massive amount of leverage that they have compared to, to assets on the books. So with that being said, we'll see how JP Morgan does uh, coming up. They do have their earnings on Friday. So that's thing, uh, something you have to keep in mind. Uh, right now, you're really kind of watching this this range here. I actually need to adjust this trend line here a little bit better. But you're really kind of watching this bottom range here around the two, uh, the 197. Uh, if we do start selling off, you need JPM to hold this level. Otherwise, this thing is going to uh, start coming down. Again, the markets uh, with NVIDIA, Tesla, and JPM uh, really kind of holding up the market. So if something starts to switch, these are the ones you need to be watching. And if they start breaking these levels, especially some of these uh, these massive push-ups, which if we break this down, and it's starting to look like it's an ascending wedge, uh, to be honest here. We could start seeing a bit of an ascending wedge. We have to see how this plays out. But we could start creating an ascending wedge here, which means that we, we could correct at least 75% of this move, which would roughly put us around the 150 mark, potentially, or 155 mark. Um, so we want to watch this really carefully and see how this continues to move as we go into earnings. Again, if they have the bad earnings, uh, that could ca cause a cascade of a bunch of different events to occur. So uh, watching that. But as of right now, as you can see, this this level here at the 205 has been a solid support and the market doesn't want it going over that. Um, despite this massive move and very few red candles, uh, I think this could be very much a, a uh, ascending wedge that could essentially causes start selling off again a lot of these ascending and descending wedges have went a a, a period where it wasn't really working because of the massive amount of uh, manipulation that was going on but then again ultimately understand it over the past couple movements i've seen they've been working like the retracing at least 75 percent that move again so that's what kind of looking for there as well and then uh, as far as any additional ones, uh, Nike is one I've been really watching. Um, we really want to kind of see how this plays out. I'm really kind of looking for this lower level here. As you can see, a wicked out of here. Once you start hitting the um, 57 mark, I think if you're a buyer of Nike, maybe you want to wait to the 57 mark. When we start getting fear in the market uh, with uh, recessionary talk, uh, I would be more uh, secure in a position in Nike if it hits 57. So I do believe there can be a lot more selling going on in Nike uh, before this thing does see a switch. But I am looking at the 57 mark there. And then I think that is uh, that's pretty much all I have. I think at this point, C-O-R. Yeah, a lot of these are still very overextended. Um potentially looking at Zoom as well, something I've been contemplating over the past couple of months. Uh, this company, when you look at their numbers, is actually extraordinarily good. Uh, despite the narrative being pushed out there that this company is essentially done because of the, there is no more pandemic, it is still very, very good despite you know what the, the charts are saying. Uh, so I may look to take a position in this at some point as well. But ultimately, again, the consolidation for this thing, do I really believe it's going to go back to whatever it was? What was it? The 600 during the pandemic? I think that is a bit of an overshot there. 
I do believe maybe some of these lower levels here, like uh, potentially 300 could be a play. I think in the longer run, if you're looking five to 10 years down the road, Zoom very well could. And again, uh, if there is any kind of lockdown again, which has been kind of forecasted by these different companies, I know Moderna uh, is coming out with the bird flu vaccine. There's a couple other things there. If they want to try to lock us down, you know, this thing is definitely going to, not that it's going to be an easy way to do that this year, but since the pandemic. Uh, but if that's the case, uh, this thing could start really running back up. And uh, I think 300 would be an easy target if that's the case. But again, it all depends on the sentiment and what's going on uh, and know how important that is uh, to even attempt to try to get to a, a $600 um essentially share price i think you're you're wishful very wishful thinking on that we may only see a 140 uh maybe the other roadblock here is about as high as you can get with it but again i still think it could be a nice play either way uh, just given that they're again their books are very very good and if they have their very uh good books and continuing the massive growth uh, they very well could have some sort of retracement and change. Uh, again, sediments like this can change very, very quickly. Uh, so you just have to keep that in mind. So with all that being said, again, that's everything I have for you. None of this financial advice. Go ahead and drop a thumbs up and I will see you guys on the next one.